Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be reacting to all of Mozart's young symphonies. I'm going to be racing these pieces and putting them on a list going from S tier down to F tier. Although I don't think there will be much F tier considering that this is Mozart, but we shall see. So this is symphony number one. Mozart composed this when he was eight, which makes all of us composers very jealous, of course. So here we go, first movement. Already starting with something very typical for Mozart, which is a kind of triadic opening melody in the whole orchestra. It already has that kind of Mozart joy in it, um, which is just so typical of him. It's amazing to see that it was there right from the beginning. Very elegant. I love the way that here he has the bass taking the melody and the upper strings just doing this very fast tremolando. It's very effective. I like that moment there where he takes the main opening theme, but he makes it minor, you know. It just changes the whole character immediately. Okay, so that was the first movement. I would put this at about a C tier. And I know that might seem a bit harsh, but considering that this is going to be compared to his later symphonies, which are obviously up there, you know, among the greatest pieces ever written. So, compared to that, this is obviously not quite as developed or refined, but it's still incredibly impressive given he was only eight, and this was one of the first symphonies that he composed. An overall wonderful, joyful piece, so let's move on to the second movement. So right off the bat we have a minor key, which is quite surprising, um, given that most of Mozart's music is in a major key. Major key pieces tend to be happier and minor key pieces tend to be more sad. To have a minor key here for the second movement is quite unique. so beautiful. It, it's here, it, Mozart is already showing his more sensitive side, which is something that he just developed more and more as, as he grew older and kept composing. But beautiful stuff. Okay, so a little, a little bit basic, you know, I mean, um, you've kind of got these chords, just still chords that move from bar to bar and this bass line in the cellos that c continues carrying on. Mozart's composition is not so developed at this stage, but he still creates uh, a beautiful mood. Very kind of moody, but um, very sensitive and beautiful at the same time. Alright, moving on. Last movement. So here we immediately have a more sprightly kind of dance, back to the more joyful side. Well, that was delightful. I mean, um, <laughs> it's quite funny really how kind of childishly simplistic some of the music here is. It kind of really sounds like something that an eight-year-old might say, but at the same time, it's very structurally compact and very skillful uh, in the way that it's put together. So, obviously, Mozart had studied other orchestral works before to inform his process. Incredible what he was able to achieve at that age. Okay, so next we have Symphony Number no. 4, 
And the reason for skipping over Symphony Number no. Two and Three is that although they were originally included as part of Mozart's symphonies, later scholarship revealed that Symphony Number no. Two and Number no. Three were probably not actually written by Mozart. They were very likely just included as part of his work by his father, who wanted to create a more impressive effect. So we move directly on to Symphony Number no. Four. Really, I often think that, um, I know that Mozart is known for his more fast and energetic music, but I find his slow music to be some of the most delightful classical music that's out there. that he sustains that high violin note over the melodies that are going on beneath. It's just lovely. And suddenly the music takes on this very reflective and sad feeling. This is something that Mozart became known for, which is his ability to switch the mood of a piece immediately from happy to suddenly very sad. piece was so reflective and complex, I, and to think that he wrote it when he was nine. That second movement really bumps up the ranking of this piece for me. It might even go into the B tier, but let's see the last movement. Here we already have a bit of Mozart's silly kind of nature coming in, with these uh, sliding and slipping melodies. That was very impressive indeed. That was far more skillfully constructed than his first symphony. He was clearly already making a lot of progress here. The first movement was very joyful, although a bit short. The second movement was really delightful and incredibly reflective. And the third movement was wonderfully constructed and quite triumphant. However, overall, I think that this symphony suffers from the same problem that the first one did, which is that the movements don't feel totally related to me. I can't quite draw a common thread between all of them in the same way that I think you can with his later symphonies. So I'm going to put this one in the B tier, still above the last one, but he still had a lot more to say. Moving on now to symphony number seven. The key is D major again, so clearly one of Mozart's favourite keys at this point. So let's dive in. This seems to be more technically advanced in terms of what's going on in the violins, compared to some of the earlier pieces we've heard. This piece has an interesting feeling. It's kind of joyful, but almost aggressively joyful, is the only way I can describe it. This piece feels to me like things are moving slowly, and yet there's something impatient about it, as though something is waiting to happen, but can't.
Okay, I have to admit, I've been listening to Mozart for about an hour now, and I think I'm getting a bit fatigued in terms of hearing the same style all the time. But I will try to remain objective in my judgments. I really enjoyed that minuet. That was quite wonderful. This is a very energetic and jolly last movement. I'm quite enjoying this. I think this is a great way to round off the piece. I love this skipping rhythm here. Well, that was really quite good. I'm torn about where to put this one because I really enjoyed the third and fourth movement, but I thought the first and second movement, well, the phrase that comes to mind is phoning it in, but Mozart was always producing such a ridiculous quantity of composition. It would be hard not to phone it in sometimes. So overall, I think I'm going to put this at a sort of a high C Maybe you could take it as a low B, but still clearly showing signs of improvement and development as a composer. Please do subscribe if you enjoy this content. I'm trying to get monetized so that I can just make music for a living, so it would really help if you subscribe to the channel.